Peppermint, welcome to the APO family. We're so happy to have you. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. On your personal journey of becoming your truest self, can you tell us some of the struggles you had and what got you through that? I think most of the struggles that I had are primarily, primarily focused around or centered around my transness, which is obviously connected to my queerness. And a lot of those were moments that I was sort of stopping myself, that I was afraid of what other people were gonna think or how they were gonna treat me. There were moments where I would face discrimination and you know maybe someone would say a rude comment. But most of the time, my fear would come from what I thought they were, how they were gonna react. And that stopped me from leaving the house many times, especially earlier on. Uh, and so, Overcoming that, I think, can be a challenge, but just really being centered and secure and, and sure of who I am and my connection to other people, I, I want that to be genuine. I try to be as nice and polite and connect with other people as much as possible. And then I don't really care what they say, you know? I actually had a really hard time growing up. I'm from the South, I'm from Prairieville, Louisiana, and I grew up in an evangelical Christian home. So I was like constantly, constantly being told that everything, you know, that I love about myself was wrong. So I learned to really hate my voice, my interests, um, my body, everything about myself I really didn't like because I was constantly being rebuked by it, either at home or at school or in the church. And um, when I found drag, and when I, uh, you know, when I, I came out in college, but I, I guess like my, my real coming out story for me personally is when I started doing drag because um, I remember the first time I ever put makeup on. I, when I, the first time I stepped into Laguna was uh, the first time that I looked into a mirror and I like really felt beautiful. And that daily confirmation or, or you know, it became my job and like I started getting into drag every single day and looking into the mirror and telling myself, oh my gosh, you're beautiful has helped David feel and know that he is beautiful. And so, you know, that's why drag is so important to me because I feel like as a community, we're, you know, I, I know I'm not the only one. Like coming out is, is such a hard thing. And drag is important to me because, you know, I feel like it's my duty to like bring light and love and, you know, inspire others to, you know, know that they're okay and beautiful just the way that they are. Because I know that if I would have had someone when I was a kid, you know, to look up at, to look up to and to tell me, you know, that I was beautiful, uh, my life would have been totally different. So, um, yeah, my, my coming out story is very, it's very long and, and it's like a roller coaster, but I am in the most beautiful place I've ever been. And I am just so, so grateful for drag because a lot of people say it like, oh, you know, drag queens like, oh, drag saved my life. But it really did because I've, I've had a really hard life. And um, music and drag have been the catapults to make all of my dreams come true. And I'm, again, the happiest I've ever been now, so. I know that the holidays are a very special time. It's a time of coming together. It's a time of celebration. But it can lead to feeling very isolated and sometimes out of place. And I think that that's common for young people. It's something I can totally remember feeling and I can relate to. And so what I would say is, if you're in a position where you don't feel safe to be yourself or to express yourself, is to go within a little bit to protect yourself. I remember, especially at this time of year, developing my fantasy world, my imagination, and what I was really doing, and I didn't realize it then, I was building the groundwork. I was laying the foundation of what my life has become now. I would take some of the Christmas ornaments off the tree and my little rainforest puppet theater and I would act out various holiday scenes in this little puppet show. And, you know, I know that's a bit um, simplistic or maybe, you know, very youthful, but the point is there is work that you can do from within that will develop and create the space for your happiest life when it's time, when you feel comfortable to live it. So express yourself if it's comfortable and safe to do, but until you can, live your fantasy, develop your fantasy, and someday you can have it become your reality.
I had been considering coming out for a, a good chunk of my, my late teens, I think like a lot of LGBTQ people. But when I went off to college, uh, I went to college to play football, which I, I loved to do. And it was not something that I spent four years of college thinking, oh, I, I can't come out because I'm, I'm playing football. But my last year uh, in college, I was at my twin brother's school. I was visiting my twin brother's school with a couple of friends. And one of those friends just finally asked me. And you know, we were walking back to my car and he said, yo, Sims, are you gay? And, you know, for years I'd wondered how I would respond if they asked, and I thought I'd have a really cool answer. And instead I just said, yeah, man, thanks for asking. Like jeepers, I'm so gay. And, you know, we, we jumped in a car and drove about two hours, three hours, get back to my college. And, and my teammates asked me everything under the sun you could possibly ask a gay guy. And I knew at the time that I didn't have answers to most of it. My school didn't have a gay straight alliance or an LGBTQ group. And so I was sort of, you know, feeling out the coming out process in real time with them. And they were really, really helpful for me, that process. And, you know, coming out to a football team isn't exactly the, the easiest thing some days. But for me, it was making sure that my, my friends and my family knew who I was and was going to live authentically. And they made it really easy for me to do. So you grew up in Wales. And there are probably a lot of kids just like you back in Wales that are nervous to come out, that are nervous to be who they, who they really are. What advice do you have for them? Well, I would say that um, wherever you grow up, particularly growing up in Wales, there's not a lot of diversity of people around you. So it's important to try and seek out things that you don't have in your life. I turned to TV, film and radio to see people who are like me and eventually found people through a local drama group. And over time, you'll have more of those around you in your life. So to just stay strong and not be afraid of coming out. There are so many people struggling with so many things out there, um, with COVID stress, with life stress, work stress, with substance stress. Could you share what got you through your challenges? As soon as this pandemic started, I knew that there was, there was this limbo that I was living in. I, I had to choose to be sober because if I stayed that way, I, I probably wouldn't be in the best mental place because I don't think any of us know how to do this. We're, we're learning every single day how to do this and <sighs> life doesn't have to be hard. You know, we, we sometimes choose to make it hard. And I think that um, allowing yourself to forgive yourself for all the things that you may have chosen to do in the past, I think it, it sets you up for better days and better moments. And I don't know, I, I, I just feel like I'm, I'm okay with seeing my reflection now. Does that make sense? It's beautiful. Yeah, I, and I think that a lot of, a lot of uh, queer kids out there are uncomfortable with who they are, but I think seeing queens and, and listening to our stories and seeing us sing Christmas songs, I think that normalizes the feeling of being uncomfortable and it tells them that it's okay not to be okay and it, it sets them up for, for the world. I think for a lot of us, when, when we struggle with our family or when we think that our family is struggling with us, Really what we're afraid of is that we're afraid of, of their expectations not being met or our own expectations not being met. And so I have found that one of the really great ways of, of sort of battling through that, if you will, is to talk about what people's expectations are for, for one another. You know, I know that my parents, when I was growing up, envisioned me having a wife and having children. And when that sort of became clear that it wasn't gonna happen, I, I knew I needed to reset their expectations, explain to them what happiness could look like for me, what a life, um, you know, what marriage could look like for me and so I think what most people want is they want the people around them to be loved to be safe um, to be cared for and I think if we can explain to one another why and how that can still happen even if it's different than the expectation I think we're more likely to get there